about a thing, yeah, we'll talk about it all. From travels to tech and mysteries, big or small. You never know what's next, could be serious or weird. But stick around, cause it's the podcast you wanna hear. Talk about a thing, let's talk about a thing. You bring the ears and I'll bring the zing. Talk about a thing, yeah, we'll talk about a thing. So grab a seat, it's time for the show to begin. It's been a few months since my last episode because honestly, life has been busy. Balancing work and family has taken up most of my time, but now things are easing up and I'm excited to get back to the podcast. In this episode, I want to dive into a topic that's been on my mind lately, difficult people. You know, the ones who belittle, disrespect, or spread negativity about you. Unfortunately, I'm no stranger to this. In fact, I've been dealing with someone close to me who treats me this way and it's reached a breaking point. I'm fed up, and I've decided to permanently remove this person from my life. Today, we'll explore why people behave this way, and more importantly, what you can do if you find yourself a victim of these toxic behaviors. Whether it's someone at work, a so-called friend, or even a family member, we'll talk about how to recognize, cope with, and eventually cut ties with the negativity. Let's get started. I think we can all agree that navigating relationships with difficult people can be one of the most challenging aspects of life. I know I faced my share of toxic interactions, and I often wondered how to turn negative situations into personal growth. Recognizing your own triggers is crucial in handling these relationships with grace and resilience. Whether it's a colleague who belittles your efforts, or a friend who constantly criticizes you, learning to manage these dynamics is essential for our emotional well-being. In this guide, I'll share my experiences and strategies that have helped me find peace and strength in the face of negativity. When I first began to reflect on the behavior of difficult individuals, I often found myself puzzled and deeply hurt. It wasn't until I delved into the possible reasons behind their actions that I started to gain a bit of clarity. One thing I realized is that negativity often stems from a place of personal pain or insecurity. For instance, someone who constantly belittles others may be grappling with their own feelings of inadequacy. It's a coping mechanism, a misguided attempt to elevate themselves by putting others down. This insight didn't excuse their behavior, but it helped me not take it so personally. I also learned that some people have never been taught healthy ways to express their emotions or deal with conflict. They might have grown up in environments where criticism and negativity were the norms, so they perpetuate those patterns in their own interactions. Understanding this context allowed me to see that their actions were more about them than they were about me. It became a bit easier to approach these situations with a sense of empathy even if the empathy wasn't always reciprocated. Another revelation was that some individuals project their own fears and insecurities onto others. This projection can take many forms, sarcasm, passive aggressiveness, or outright hostility. Recognizing this behavior for what it is, a projection, helped me create a mental barrier between their negativity and my self-worth. It wasn't an overnight change. But each time I reminded myself of this, it became a little bit easier to handle. Of course, there are those who might simply enjoy the power trip or drama that comes with causing others discomfort. While these motivations are harder to empathize with, knowing that some people derive satisfaction from creating chaos can be liberating. It removes the mystery and the sting from their actions. I realized that I didn't need to win their approval or change their behavior. I only needed to protect my own peace and well-being. In understanding these different motivations, I also had to confront my own reactions and assumptions. Was I expecting too much from someone incapable of giving it? Was I internalizing their behavior as a reflection of my own worth? These questions led me to a more balanced and compassionate perspective, not just towards others, but towards myself as well. I found that recognizing my own triggers has been a game changer in handling toxic people. It wasn't always easy to pinpoint exactly what set me off, 
but once I did, it felt like I had unlocked a new level of self-awareness. I noticed that certain words or actions would instantly make my heart race or fill me with self-doubt. To get to the bottom of these reactions, I started keeping a journal. Whenever I had a particularly upsetting encounter, I would write down the details, what was said, how it made me feel, and what thoughts it triggered. This practice of journaling revealed patterns I hadn't seen before. I realized that criticism, especially when delivered in a dismissive or condescending tone, was a significant trigger for me. It often took me back to times in my life when I felt undervalued or unworthy. With this insight, I was better prepared to face similar situations. When someone's words started to affect me, I could mentally pause and remind myself that my worth isn't defined by their opinion. But recognizing my triggers was just the first step. I also had to develop strategies to manage my reactions. One technique that worked for me was deep breathing. When I felt that familiar rush of anxiety or anger, I'd take a few deep breaths to center myself. This simple act gave me the space to choose my response rather than react impulsively. Over time, it became easier to remain calm and composed, even in the face of provocation. Another helpful approach was to practice mindfulness. By staying present in the moment, I could observe my emotions without getting swept away by them. If someone said something hurtful, I'd acknowledge the sting, but then focus on what I could control, my reaction. This mindset shift was empowering because it put me back in the driver's seat of my emotional well-being. I also found it useful to have a few go-to affirmations. Simple phrases like, I am enough, or their words do not define me, served as quick reminders of my inherent value. Repeating these affirmations helped to counteract the negativity and reinforced my self-worth. Ultimately, Understanding my own triggers enabled me to navigate toxic interactions with greater resilience. It wasn't about changing the difficult people in my life. It was about changing how I responded to them. And that made all the difference. For a long time, I struggled with the idea of setting boundaries. It felt selfish and even confrontational, something I was never comfortable with. But as I continued to navigate toxic relationships, it became clear that establishing boundaries was not just important. It was essential for my well-being. It took a significant mental shift to realize that boundaries are an act of self-respect, a way to protect my emotional and mental health. I started small. Initially, it was as simple as limiting my time around people who drained my energy. For example, I used to feel obligated to attend every social gathering, even if I knew certain individuals would leave me feeling exhausted and demoralized. By allowing myself to decline those invitations, I began to see the benefits of preserving my energy for more uplifting interactions. Work was another area where boundaries were crucial. I remember a particular co-worker who would constantly undermine my contributions in meetings. I decided to address the issue directly but calmly. I expressed how their actions were affecting me and set a clear expectation for future interactions. While it was uncomfortable, the outcome was worth it. They became more mindful of their behavior, and I felt a renewed sense of confidence. Another important lesson was that boundaries aren't just about saying no to others. They are also about saying yes to myself. This meant prioritizing my needs and not feeling guilty about it. If I needed time to recharge after a stressful week, I allowed myself that space without apology. It was liberating to understand that taking care of myself was not selfish but necessary. Communicating boundaries effectively was another hurdle. I learned that it's not about being aggressive or confrontational. It's about being clear and assertive. For example, if a friend constantly dumped their emotional baggage on me without reciprocating support, I would say something like, I care about you, but I need some space to manage my own feelings right now. This way, I was honest about my limits without damaging the relationship. Setting boundaries has transformed my interactions and brought a sense of peace and control back into my life. 
It taught me that I have the right to define how I want to be treated and that it's okay to put my well-being first. In my journey of dealing with toxic interactions, one of the most transformative skills I've developed is the power of detachment. I used to let other people's hurtful comments cling to me like stubborn burrs, impacting my self-esteem and peace of mind. It felt like I was giving away pieces of my happiness to others' negativity. But once I learned to detach, everything began to change. A technique that really helped me was visualization. Whenever someone said something hurtful, I imagined their words as leaves floating down a gentle stream. I'd acknowledge the words, but then let them drift away without holding on to them. This visualization was powerful because it allowed me to accept the reality of the situation without internalizing the negativity. It's like giving yourself permission to let go. Another practice that made a significant difference was grounding myself in my own values and self-worth. I started to remind myself regularly of who I am and what I stand for. Whenever negativity was directed my way, I'd mentally reaffirm my core beliefs and values. This practice acted as a shield, helping me maintain my inner peace and stay true to myself despite external chaos. I also found immense benefit in practicing mindfulness. Instead of immediately reacting to hurtful comments, I trained myself to pause and breathe deeply. This momentary pause allowed me to process my emotions without letting them overwhelm me. By staying present, I could observe the negativity for what it was, someone else's projection, not a reflection of my worth. Additionally, I began to focus on the intent behind the words rather than the words themselves. Often, toxic remarks come from a place of pain or insecurity in the other person. Understanding this helped me detach emotionally. I wasn't dismissing my feelings. Rather, I was choosing not to let someone else's pain become my own. Lastly, I surrounded myself with affirmations and positive reminders. Simple phrases like, I am worthy, or their words do not define me, became my mental armor. Repeating these affirmations during tough interactions helped reinforce my resilience and detach from negativity. These practices, while simple, have profoundly shifted my approach to toxic interactions. By letting go of the harmful words of others, I reclaimed my power and nurtured my emotional well-being. In my experience, dealing with difficult people has often felt like an emotional roller coaster, but over time, I've discovered how to use these interactions as opportunities for personal growth. Instead of seeing them purely as negative experiences, I began to look for lessons hidden within the discomfort. One of the most impactful shifts in my mindset came when I decided to view every challenge as a chance to better understand myself and my responses. For example, when someone would criticize me harshly, my immediate reaction was usually one of defensiveness and hurt. However, I started to pause and reflect on the feedback, asking myself whether there was any truth in their words that I could learn from. This approach didn't mean I accepted every criticism as valid, but it did mean I became more discerning about which feedback could help me improve. In a way, it turned moments of discomfort into stepping stones for self-betterment. Another transformative practice was embracing resilience. Each encounter with a toxic person tested my emotional strength, and each time I navigated through it, I found myself becoming more resilient. Instead of allowing their negativity to wear me down, I chose to see it as a test of my inner fortitude. It was empowering to realize that I could emerge stronger and more self-assured after each challenging interaction. I also focused on developing empathy for myself. Understanding my triggers, as I mentioned earlier, played a significant role in this. By recognizing the specific behaviors that upset me, I could approach similar situations with more patience and self-compassion. I reminded myself that it's okay to feel hurt or angry and that these emotions were valid. This self-empathy was crucial in helping me navigate through toxic interactions without losing my sense of self-worth. Lastly, 
I sought to turn these negative encounters into opportunities for setting and enforcing my boundaries. Each time I stood up for myself, I was not only protecting my well-being, but also reinforcing my self-respect. This practice of boundary setting became an essential part of my growth, teaching me to prioritize my needs and protect my emotional health. Practicing empathy and compassion has been a pivotal part of my journey in dealing with toxic people. It's natural to want to put up walls or become defensive when faced with negativity, but I've found that approaching these situations with empathy can diffuse tension and create a more constructive dialogue. When I encounter someone who seems determined to bring me down, I try to remind myself that their actions often stem from their own pain or insecurities. This doesn't excuse their behavior, but it helps me respond with understanding rather than anger. One particular instance comes to mind when a colleague seemed to constantly undermine my efforts. Instead of reacting defensively, I decided to have a calm and open conversation with them. I expressed how their behavior affected me and listened to their perspective. It turned out they were dealing with a lot of personal stress that had nothing to do with me. While this didn't completely change their behavior, it did create a space for mutual understanding and reduce the hostility between us. In addition to empathizing with others, I've learned the importance of showing compassion towards myself. Dealing with toxic interactions can be emotionally draining, and it's crucial to acknowledge my own feelings and needs. I allow myself to feel hurt or frustrated without judgment. This self-compassion has been instrumental in maintaining my emotional health and resilience. Mindfulness practices have also been beneficial in fostering empathy and compassion. By staying present in the moment and observing my thoughts and emotions without judgment, I've been able to respond more thoughtfully rather than react impulsively. This mindfulness not only helps in dealing with others, but also in nurturing a kinder relationship with myself. I've also made it a point to practice acts of kindness, both towards others and myself. Simple gestures like offering a genuine compliment or taking time for self-care can create a ripple effect of positivity. These small acts remind me that even in a world filled with negativity, there's always room for compassion and kindness. By practicing empathy and compassion, I've been able to navigate toxic interactions more gracefully and maintain a sense of inner peace. It's a continuous journey, but one that has profoundly impacted my well-being and relationships. There have been moments in my life when dealing with toxic people felt like an insurmountable challenge, and it was in these times that seeking support became essential. I used to believe that asking for help was a sign of weakness, but I soon realized it takes a great deal of strength and self-awareness to reach out when needed. Sharing my struggles with trusted friends and family members allowed me to gain new perspectives and emotional support that I couldn't have achieved on my own. One particular instance stands out vividly in my memory. I was grappling with a particularly negative relationship at work, and it was starting to affect my overall well-being. Feeling stuck, I reached out to a close friend who had always been a pillar of strength for me. Just verbalizing my frustrations and hearing her empathetic responses felt like a weight lifting off my shoulders. She offered not only emotional support, but also practical advice on how to navigate the situation. It was incredibly validating to hear someone else acknowledge my feelings and experiences, making me feel less isolated. In addition to friends and family, I've found solace in professional support. Therapy has been a transformative resource, providing a safe space to explore my feelings and develop coping strategies. My therapist helped me understand the dynamics of toxic interactions and offered tailored advice on setting boundaries and protecting my mental health. It was reassuring to have an unbiased perspective that equipped me with tools to handle difficult people more effectively. Online communities and support groups have also been beneficial. These spaces allowed me to connect with others who had faced similar challenges, offering mutual support and encouragement. 
Reading about others' experiences and solutions provided me with a sense of solidarity and renewed hope. Through these experiences, I've learned the invaluable lesson that it's okay to seek support. Whether it's leaning on friends, consulting a therapist, or joining a support group, reaching out can provide the strength and clarity needed to navigate toxic interactions. It's a crucial step in protecting my emotional well-being and fostering resilience. Cultivating a positive environment has been instrumental in my journey of handling toxic interactions. One of the first steps I took was to consciously surround myself with people who uplift and support me. I began to spend more time with friends and family who brought joy and positivity into my life. These relationships acted as a buffer against negativity, reinforcing my self-worth and providing a sense of belonging. In addition to nurturing supportive relationships, I also started to engage in activities that brought me genuine happiness and fulfillment. Whether it was diving into a good book, exploring nature, or pursuing creative hobbies like painting and writing, these activities became my sanctuary. They helped me reconnect with my passions and reminded me of the beauty and joy that life has to offer. Creating a positive environment wasn't just about external influences. It also involved cultivating a positive mindset. I made a conscious effort to focus on gratitude and the positive aspects of my life. Keeping a gratitude journal where I noted down three things I was grateful for each day had a transformative effect. It shifted my focus from what was wrong to what was right, creating a more optimistic outlook. Another significant change was decluttering my physical space. I found that a tidy and organized environment had a calming effect on my mind. I started small, clearing out unnecessary items from my living and working spaces. The act of creating order in my surroundings mirrored the sense of order I was striving to achieve in my emotional life. Lastly, I sought to minimize exposure to negativity whether it was limiting time on social media or avoiding conversations that drained my energy. By being selective about the content I consumed and the people I engaged with, I created a more nurturing environment for myself. Through these practices, I found that cultivating a positive environment empowered me to handle toxic interactions with greater resilience and grace. It became clear that by investing in my own happiness and well-being, I could better navigate the challenges posed by difficult people. And that wraps up today's episode on dealing with people who treat you badly and talk trash about you. I hope that by sharing my personal experiences and strategies, you've gained some insights into how to handle these challenging interactions in your own life. It's not easy, but understanding why people behave this way, recognizing your own triggers, setting boundaries, and learning to detach from negativity can make a world of difference. As I mentioned earlier, I've recently made the decision to remove someone toxic from my life, and it was a tough but necessary choice. Sometimes protecting your peace and well-being means letting go of relationships that no longer serve you. Remember, you don't have to tolerate disrespect or negativity, and you have every right to prioritize your own mental health. Thank you for tuning in to talk about a thing, I appreciate you all for your support, and I look forward to bringing you more episodes soon. If this episode resonated with you or helped you in any way, feel free to share your thoughts or experiences. Take care, stay strong, and until next time, remember to always protect your peace and never let anyone make you feel less than you are. That's a wrap on today. We talked about a thing. Hope you had some fun, learned a little something. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the follow too. Cause there's always more random stuff coming just for you.